get good grades on my homework, but I'm still bad at taking tests. I studied all night, but I still got a bad grade. Or my favorite, I know the material, but just the test wasn't fair. If you've ever said any variation of these statements, then I am so glad you're here because I'm going to reveal to you in this video what is really going on. Now, it might be true that your homework assignments, your projects, and your class partici participation grades are better than your test grades, but by no means does that mean that you're bad at taking tests. Even if you've always been bad at taking tests, like since as long as you can remember, I still make the argument that you're not bad at taking tests. In fact, I argue that there's no such thing as a bad test taker. If you are curious, then stick around. Hi, I'm Katie Acevedo from SchoolHabits.com. I'm a private executive function coach who teaches students and professional strategies to learn and work smarter. In fact, Learn and Work Smarter is the name of my brand new podcast. Yes, I finally have a podcast. It's called Learn and Work Smarter. And you can find that in your podcast apps. You can also find it here on YouTube under the podcast section. And of course, you can find it linked in the description box below. It is Oh, it is everything I ever dreamed. It is for students and working professionals who want to learn and work smarter. Very tactical strategies, very quick hit strategies to get you more productive, get you getting your work done without all the stress, right? It's, it's so good. Check it out. I would love for you to follow me on my new podcast. And of course, I'm on Instagram at School Habits. Give this video a like and a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And for a transcript of this video and of all of the links and things that I mentioned in this video, head to the description box. Now with one exception, which I will explain at the end of this video, the real reason that you're bad, bad at taking tests is that you don't know the material well enough yet to be tested on it. One more time for the people in the back. The reason you're not good at taking tests is because you don't know the material well enough yet to be tested on it. In other words, you're not well enough prepared. So here's the truth, whether or not it goes against everything you've ever believed about yourself or life or whatever, okay? This is the truth. If you are absolutely and properly prepared for an exam, and you know that material inside and outside, then you will do well on the test. Now, of course, there's one extenuating situation again, which I will get to at the end of this video, but it is so rare that that situation applies to, to students that 99.5% of students are gonna be in this category of doing poorly on tests because despite what they wanna believe, they're not prepared well. Now, your first instinct might be, I don't know, it might be to be like, no, I study, I prepare well for tests, I like super definitely know my material inside and out, and I still do badly. I hear you, and I know that's a really frustrating situation. To feel like you're not getting any ROI, any return on your investment where you're studying and then you don't do well on your tests, you're like, of, of course you didn't do something wrong because you studied, right? I know that feeling, but what's really happening is one of two things, or it could be both. One, you're studying the wrong way, or two, you're not studying enough. Now, I know that might sound a little simple, okay? But each of those things, you're not studying the right way, and then you're not studying enough, each of those things, as simple as it sounds, just sort of like rolling off the tip of my tongue, is not actually that simple. And that's what I'm gonna get into today. So let's look at each of these two reasons and figure out what's really going on. Number one, you're studying the wrong way. Okay, let's, let's break this down. Most students use passive study methods, and this might actually be what you're doing. Now, these passive study methods, I, mean, I, I wanna use air quotes for study because it's, it's not really studying, might include looking over your class notes. It might be um, reviewing slides that your teacher made. It might be even flipping through pre-made digital flashcards. Yes, even if your teacher made them, actually, especially if your teacher or a classmate made them. It might be sort of like scrubbing through a, a video that you watched in class just to try to like review the information. All of those efforts feel like studying, which actually makes them very dangerous 
because you're, they feel like studying. So like time might go by and you might be like, well, no, I studied for 45 minutes. I studied for three hours. But in reality, you're doing this sort of like passive studying, which does not work. So the real problem with passive studying is A, it takes a lot of time. And B, it's dangerous because it gets you believing that you've studied and it gets you believing that you're prepared for the, uh, for the test and that you know the material. And then when you go to take your test, you're not ready. And you're super bummed because you really thought you studied, but in reality, please hear me, you didn't study. The only real type of studying involves active recall. Yes, if you have read any of my stuff on schoolhabits.com or followed any of my stuff on Instagram or seen any of my videos, I swear the words active recall are probably like the words that I use more than anything. Active recall is the study method where you use trigger words or questions or cues to get yourself to generate information recall material without having any resources like your notes or Google or anything in front of you. It's very uncomfortable if I'm being honest. It's, it's hard, but it works. Now, because active recall is uncomfortable, a lot of people don't do it. But in reality, using active recall is the only way to get your brain to understand, process, and store information well enough and deep enough that you can recall and apply it when you need to on a test in various contexts. So your teacher might be might on the test ask you about something that you studied from like different angles. And if you really used active recall and you really knew that information inside and out, it wouldn't matter how your teacher phrased the question. It wouldn't matter what angle they came from because you knew the stuff versus if you just memorized right? Then you're only being able to regurgitate material if it's asked one particular way, the one particular way that you studied it. So just so that you fully understand what active recall is, I really, really promise me you will go to the active recall tutorial that I have linked in the description box. But of course, in the meantime, let me give you some active recall study methods so you get a, a better picture of what it is that I'm talking about. The simplest and most common and probably the most effective active recall method includes analog flashcards that you make yourself. Always make your own flashcards. Do not rely on anyone else's flashcards. We are not going for convenience. We're going for effectiveness. Number two, taking practice tests and practice quizzes. Where can you get these? You can ask your teacher, or you can take old ones that you had and white out the answers and make a copy. Number three, doing practice questions and problem sets. Uh, where can you get those? Get them in your textbook, get them from your homework, get them from your teacher. Number four, creating and filling in blank study guides that, yes, you guessed it, you make yourself. Number five, having someone else ask you questions while you verbally answer them. Again, you're doing all of these with no resources, with no notes in front of you. Okay, that is how active recall works. Now, when you use active recall study methods, any of the ones that I just read it off, or there's other ones too, and you can get yourself to the point where you can fully and accurately answer the question or respond to those trigger cues, vocab words, questions, dates, whatever it is that you're studying, right? And you can fully answer those without looking at your notes. Then and only then are you fully prepared for your test. Then and only then do you really know the material. When you use active recall or when you study anything, you need to have some kind of output. Okay, where you are speaking it, where you are writing it, where you are thinking it, okay? Passive study methods, these, this baloney that doesn't work that most people do, because it's easy, it makes us feel good, okay? That's all input, like reading through the notes. Isn't that easy? You're just like, mm, look at my notes. Or you're like scrubbing through a video, you're like through the video, like is that, is that really working? No, that's input. Active recall requires output. Okay, does that make sense? Only when you can fully and adequately and thoroughly output the material that you're studying with a trigger cue are you prepared for the test. And that is when you will do well on the test. And it won't matter how your teacher asks the question. You will be fine and you will feel confident, right? That's another huge piece of this. Active recall makes you feel confident in what you're doing. Like passive studying techniques 
makes you feel confident, but in like a like a fake kind of way, like you secretly kind of know that you're like fudging it, right? But with active recall, you have tested yourself approximately one bazillion times without the answer in front of you. So you walk into the test being like, yeah, I got it. Like literally hit me with, <laughs> with the, any question. I know it, right? And that confidence is what will bleed into your, your test performance for sure. And of course, on the other hand, using the passive recall will give you that false sense of security, right? That you know it and then you show up to the test and, and, and you don't know it. And that your first instinct is to be like, well, it's not my fault. The test was hard. The teacher asked questions that weren't on the study guide. But really though, or did you only study like the, the one dimensional version of the study guide? When you use active recall, you're getting like 3D. You get like 4K. I don't know what the words are, but you're getting it from all the <laughs> you're getting it from all the angles, okay? That's the magic of active recall. So let me boil this down. The only way to be able to accurately answer questions on tests, which gets you a good grade, is if you can accurately answer those questions before the test. Okay? Then repeat that. The only way you can accurately answer questions on a test is if you can accurately answer those questions before the test, right? And you do that through active recall. Now, the second reason that you might be getting bad test grades, not that you're a bad test taker, but that you're bad getting bad test grades, is that you're not studying enough. Studying something to the point where we really, really know it takes longer than we want it to. Their learning process on a, on a cellular, molecular level takes the time it takes, no matter how we feel about it, okay? Now, let's say you're already using active recall study methods because you've been following school habits for so long, then that's awesome, that's amazing. And if you're still doing poorly on tests, then I argue you're not studying enough. And what I mean by that is not, I don't want you to study longer and for like more hours, but are you having enough study sessions? Are you having enough study sessions? Okay, that's the key. And that's a question that you have to answer honestly. Now, when we study something like in the pocket of a study session, the material that we're sort of testing ourselves on hangs around in our short term memory for the duration of that study session, or at least for a, a portion of it. Now, that's cool. And that's definitely the first step to learning. But our short term memory is temporary, right? Have you ever had the situation where like, let's say you were studying and you felt really good. You ran through like 50 flashcards. Like I knew every single one of them. And then like you go have dinner and then you come back to your flashcards and you're like, oh my God, I, I only know like 20 of them. I swore or even the next day, right? You forgot and you get frustrated because like I knew them before. That's exactly what is supposed to happen. That is the learning process. That is not bad. That's good. Where most people go wrong is that's where they stop. And that's where they get frustrated, right? No, like work through that. You don't go around that. You go through that, oh shoot, I used to know this, period. And you, you get at it again. You get into those flashcards again. You have another study session. And then next time, it'll be in your short-term memory, right, for the duration of your study session. And a little bit more will stick around to your long-term memory. That's what I'm getting at. The key to getting information from your short-term memory into your long-term memory is repetition over time. That's the dang magic. Repetition over time. You have to come back to the material more times than you want to. Not for longer than you want to. Ain't no one here saying you gotta do like 90 minute study sessions. Please don't. 45 minutes is like max. Maybe an hour if you're like a, like a super learner, okay? But, and you got like focus on fire. But like 20, 25 to 45 minutes for a study session, but multiple over multiple days. That's called spaced repetition. And I talk about that probably just as much as I talk about active recall. Now, of course, my spaced repetition tutorial is linked in the description box below too. And I give really like nitty gritty um, study schedules for how to like map out a study plan using spaced repetition. So when you're done with this video, you can check that out too. Now, in the beginning of this video, I teased that there's one legitimate reason why someone might be bad at taking tests, even though I'm saying that there's no such thing as a bad test taker, right? And here it is. Severe debilitating test anxiety. Severe anxiety can prevent us from accessing cognitive tools, knowledge, and memory. It is no joke. If you have severe test anxiety, then you're probably familiar with the scenario of going blank before or during a test. 
all right? That's anxiety showing up saying, hey, I'm here to keep you alive and to survive. I'm not gonna let you think about this test right now because I need to keep you alive. Now, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not gonna you know, dive into you know, a medical perspective of anxiety. If you have anxiety or you feel that you do, please consult a physician, not a physician, okay? But, and this is a big but, I still argue that you can drastically reduce your test anxiety by being better prepared by studying the correct way, by using active recall, by having more study sessions that are shorter, okay, but studying more so you get repetition in there, by using spaced repetition. The better prepared you are for a test, the better you will do on the test. Hear me out. If you use legitimately, you use active recall techniques for multiple days, ideally, weeks, right, before a test, then you will have proven to yourself over and over and over and over again that you've got it, that you know the material. You will have hard evidence that you know what you're doing. And that will increase your confidence because, I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to argue against the evidence, right? Like if you take, you know, five practice exams before you take your real exam, you'll have five concrete pieces of evidence that say, yeah, you can do this. And what do you think that confidence is going to do for you on test day? It's going to skyrocket you. Do you follow me? Let's say that you make yourself a study guide with all the possible test questions on it. And then over multiple days, multiple weeks, whatever, you get to the point where you can fill in every single question. just like boom, 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 boom. I know that, right? There's your proof. There, that, that's all you, that you need. So then when you walk into the test, you're like, oh, I've, I've done this so many times before. That will decrease the anxiety. And when you decrease the anxiety, you'll be better able to access the information that you worked hard to store. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you try it and I hope you actually take action. Because it's amazing if you watch this video and thank you for doing that. But the magic is in the action. Go out and do this. Go out and do this. Don't forget, Learn and Work Smarter is my new podcast. You can find it on the podcast apps and also here on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram at School Habits and of course, schoolhabits.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching.